Hello. This talk is about front of neck access for facing Africa. And what we'll talk about now is using narrow bore cricothyroidotomies in two situations, elective and emergency. This is the equipment we have for narrow bore cricothyroidotomy. This is the Rabison system. This is a child cannula, 14 gauge. This is a demonstration one. And here we see the cannula. It is curved, kink resistant, but not kink proof. It's made out of Teflon and the needle. That is a child Rabison cannula. There's an adult version. That is 13 gauge, longer, and the collar is a different colour. But it's similar, but just larger. It also comes in the packet with a device to tie it around the neck. This is a narrow bore cannula. It is inserted into the cricothyroid membrane, and you will need a syringe filled with saline. It is inserted into the neck, if the head was here, inserted into the neck, through the cricothyroid membrane, aspiration of free air, and the cannula is um, slid into the trachea. We do not have a mannequin to show you that. Now these devices allow oxygenation and ventilation if you have a suitable system. You will need a system such as the Ventrain. This is disposable jet ventilator. This portion is connected to the cricothyroid cannula. This side port is to measure carbon dioxide if necessary mm -hmm. through capnography. Mm -hmm. This is the body of the device and this part, long tubing, which is knotted, is connected to oxygen, oxygen source. You may need another connector. This can be connected to the breathing system. And this is turned on a flow of 15 litres. This device will allow you to oxygenate, that means deliver oxygen through the cricothyroid cannula, but also ventilate. <laughs> By ventilate, I mean move clear CO2. And this is an unusual device in that it will use the Venturi principle to extract gas from the patient's lung in the expiratory phase. Mm -hmm. And the instructions how to use it are on the side. For inspiration, you occlude both the lower hole and the upper hole. And gas will be delivered into the patient's lungs from the oxygen source. Occlude both holes. For expiration, lift the thumb. <laughs> The gas is still flowing into the body of the device, but it generates a Venturi principle through here, and gas expiratory volume is uh, entrained out of the patient's lungs. And this can work even in upper airway obstruction. This is the only device that allows that to happen. All other jet ventilators require an a degree of upper airway patency for expiration. This device doesn't, and that's why we picked it for facing Africa. It is light, it is portable. However, it is quite expensive. And this is used with narrow bore cricothyroidotomies. Now we use this in two potential situations. First, Airway management is sufficiently uncertain or difficult that we cannot guarantee gas exchange during general anaesthesia. So we can put in, according to the patient's size, a cricothyroidotomy under local anaesthetic with sedation. This is called a precautionary cricothyroidotomy. We put it in the neck and we can connect this up to the patient to allow oxygenation and ventilation. If we get into trouble later. So this is a form of insurance policy. So we can put this in and then give the patient a general anaesthetic with paralysis and if we have problems with airway management such as to peel, 
intubate, mass ventilation or tracheal intubation, that we can use this to keep the patient alive. That's the first type of use of this device. The second type is the emergency situation where all other forms of airway management have failed and the patient's about to die and we can put this in in an emergency. That is always more difficult and demanding. In facing Africa, we have never had to put in an emergency device. But elective devices we put in occasionally, maybe once a visit. There is another option, which uh, the surgeons will have, which is a wide-bore cricothyroidotomy device, and that can be uh, a tracheal tube for an adult, say, size 6, and the, and the equipment you need is a scalpel, a size 6 tube, and a tracheal hook, and that can be done as an emergency wide-bore cricothyroid device. Remember, if you put in a narrow-bore cricothyroid device, standard breathing systems will not work. If you put in a wide-bore cricothyroid device, say more than four or five millimeters internal diameter, standard breathing systems will allow oxygenation and ventilation. And narrow-bore devices, you will need special equipment. Hello, this is going to be a demonstration of a Ravacin cannula in a simulated complete upper airway obstruction. This is a dummy lung. I'm going to use the Ventrain ventilation device to show it can be used in complete upper airway obstruction. Connect the Ventrain device to a narrowbore cricothyroidotomy. Connect the other part of the Ventrain to an oxygen source and turn it to 15 litres. It will be noisy. You will notice there is no flow at this stage, despite 15 litres going into the device. That is the stage of equilibrium. I'll now start the inspiratory phase by obstruction, uh, occlusion, occlusion of both holes, and expiration, and inspiration, and expiration. The only expiratory pathway is through the top part of the ventrain device by occlusion. Inspiration, expiration. Inspiration, expiration. And this device is very useful in the complete upper airway obstruction. All other ventilatory systems require expiration through the upper airway. Inspiration, Expiration, inspiration, expiration.